Nozzle clogs all the time, and Ender definitely shouldn't do that. And patterns on 3D prints. All this and more Print Fix Friday, episode 147. Let's get into it. Hey all, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Fixing 3D Prints and 3D Printers here with 3D Musketeers. If you are dealing with 3D printer problems, you can reach out to us, hit us up on the social medias, slide into those DMs, and we'll do our best to help you out. I mostly monitor Twitter, so, you know, if that's something that uh, you'd like to do, you can do that. You can also email us. That's all linked in that description, so go take a look. And hey, while you're down there, leave a like. But let's jump into it here. We've got a fail, um, simply titled, What Am I Doing Wrong? The nozzle clogs all the time, and I've really had issues, especially with the infill, printed on a Rank Force R100 with PLA by 200 degrees. I don't even know what a Rank Force R100 is, and I've been in the industry a minute. One eternity later. We found it. Okay. Uh, this is not what I was expecting from a printer, but hey, let's see if I can get a better look as to how that hot end looks. Yeah, that works. Um, we're missing quite a few things that you'd normally want on a 3D printer. Uh, there is absolutely no part cooling, and in fact, if we look at this image... Hold on a second, I'll enhance. The nozzle has a blob around it, so this is a failed print that they used for a media image. But what's going on here is... I'm fairly certain you got some heat creep going on. Because I don't know this printer, generally speaking, it's going to be an older machine, and that's not great. I'm not certain there's a good way to actually fix this, and considering I had to find some random website to even get information about this thing, I have a feeling it's just quite old. And well, 3D printing tech has come a long way in even just the last couple of years, right? Ever since Bamboo pretty much hit the ground here in this industry, things have really shifted and printers have gotten considerably better because companies realize they have to compete or they will fail. With this machine, we're missing a lot. We're missing a part cooling fan and it looks like we're also missing an actual heat sink cooling fan. So that you're actually just experiencing heat creep. If you're clogging all the time, and you're running regular PLA, nothing fancy, nothing old, something that's relatively new, then you're not gonna have issues with regular nozzle clogs. This is likely due to something else. This printer needs to be replaced. Um, certainly a new HADA needs to go on it, something that's a little bit more modern. While it is nice to see that we have a thermistor, it's not fully seated, which has me worrying that different thermistors read at different positions on the little metal cartridge or in some cases a glass bead and so if it's not all the way in it's not getting a proper reading for the temperature right and technically thermistors don't read temperature they read resistance and their resistance changes based on temperature yada yada it's technical don't worry about it i worry that because this is just older tech the amount of effort that it's going to take to get it running is well more than what the actual printer itself is worth. I'd love to know your all's thoughts here, because there's part of me that wants to, like, kit bash this thing and make it work again, but I also realize that there's so much time, effort, and money involved with doing something like that, that it's a bit of a pain, right? And for, what, not even 400 bucks, you can go get a half-decent 3D printer, and if you want something that's really awesome and fully open source, you can spend a little bit more money. Go get a Prusa Mark IV, which, of course, we'll link down below if that's something that you want because we do have affiliate links with Prusa. I'll card to the series where we actually built the Mark IV live on YouTube. It was a great printer, and we beat the hell out of it right now, and it's been running great. But I just don't know if it's worth upgrading those older printers. What do you guys think? Speaking of dangerous, my printer is doing weird things on its own. I change... The nozzle like I did a hundred thousand times before on my Ender 3 S1 Pro. That's a lot of nozzle changes. You're probably better at it than I am. This time the light goes off and the printer fully stops working. I didn't touch anything. I unplugged the power to the printer and the USB-C cable 
to the Sonic pad. After only connecting the power, the printer starts up, but after connecting the USB-C cable, dangerous stuff starts to happen. How the F can this happen? I'm so happy I was nearby when this happened. USB-C is not connected to anything. Let's take a look. So, you know how we've, like, made jokes about Magic Smoke before? That is literally Magic Smoke. There is a short inside of this printer. Uh, I'm very glad that you were there when this happened, because that is a house fire waiting to happen. Likely something shorted out. My best guess here, it's your heater that shorted out, failed its MOSFET, and now it's shorting out other things on the board. What exactly causes that? Eh, it could be from shorting out the wires on the heater with a tool or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's dead, Jim. Don't, uh, don't use this printer again. It's time to replace it. There is no easy user serviceable solution to this problem. Get rid of it. Your printer shouldn't be putting out more vape smoke than a Subaru convention. And... Uh, certainly, we don't want to see any of those bright lights on the inside either. Golly. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a spicy meatball. Woo! I would also get rid of that USB-C cable. Unfortunately, we don't know what's shorting. Something is shorting, and it looks like it's shorting across the power line. My assumption here is you either have a bad cable or a bad board, but I would replace both. USB-C cables are cheap enough that it really doesn't matter anymore. Just get a new one. They're cheap. Just go get a new one. Uh, 3D printers, on the other hand, they're not cheap. Thankfully, motherboards can be had for a reasonable price. And quite frankly, it's an Ender 3 S1 Pro. You could put an aftermarket motherboard in this thing and it's going to run just fine. So you got that option too. Can't get patterns from build plate. So I've been trying to print on these fancy rainbow sheets, the PEY and PET, although I think it's PEO. The prints come out fine, but none of the fancy rainbow effects shows up. The lines on the first layer maybe look too defined. Should they be squished together more so the first layer looks like it's more of a flat surface rather than these clearly defined lines? Yes. You're actually on that exact path. Often, if you have an idea for what might be wrong, roll with it. You're probably right. It's not an issue. You are too far. We've talked about this before. We have a couple of videos on it. We have one about leveling your bed. We have another one about doing a Z offset. This is a Z offset thing, so we'll card to it so you can take a look, but you are too far away. We can clearly see the valleys here, okay? A lot of obvious valleys. If you can see valleys, you are too far away, squish it down. If those ruffles have ridges, if there are ridges in between your lines, you are too close, you got to pull the nozzle away a little bit. On most machines, adjusting the Z offset is fairly simple. You can do it by adjusting baby steps on the machine itself to kind of dial in exactly where you need it. Or you can go ahead and do it in the slicer. Just be careful of doing it in the slicer. If you do it inside of the slicer, it will apply to every single print after that. So if you fix the issue mechanically by like moving the bed up or moving the nozzle down, if you fix the issue mechanically, you have to remember to adjust it back in software as well, because otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. Nobody wants that. Does anybody know what is happening here? Yeah, yeah, we've got some issues going on with our prints. That's a pretty serious layer shift, and it's in both axes. Yeah, it, it, it's in both directions here. This one, this to me looks more like a clogged nozzle that figured itself out, and then it kind of layer shifted from that. Uh, we definitely have some layer shifting going on, potentially some nozzle clogging going on. This, I don't know. It, it, it's a weird angle, so I can't tell precisely how it happened. This one, though, looks like a clog nozzle. So on 3D printers, you want to make sure you don't print in kind of a dirty environment, right? A 0.4 nozzle sounds like it's really big, but it's not, right? It's like two or three times the thickness of a human hair. It's not very large. And if you're running that and you're in, let's say, a wood shop and you've got wood fiber all over the area, that is absolutely going to clog a nozzle eventually. Generally speaking, 
you're fine. It's not going to create issues. Some dust in the air is not that big of a deal, but larger particles can definitely clog nozzles. There's something to be said about not buying cheap filament, but these parts do look pretty clean right up until they don't. So it could be something that's mechanical related as well. The filament looks fine to me. I'm guessing it's either a dirty environment, it could be heat creep that's causing it, or this is on like an Ender style printer. And it is, it's a CR6. A CR6 is a bed slinger. If your cables get in the way, which I believe is possible on the CR6 and the CR6 SE, it can get in the way of the movement and create this problem. So be careful with dealing with cables. If you are printing parts and you're seeing this happen and your cables are getting in the way, use like a rubber band or something to tie them up and out of the way. You can use one of those like retractable key holder things. Those work too, but those are expensive and rubber bands are relatively cheap and you probably have some sitting in the junk drawer in your kitchen. And don't act like you don't have a junk drawer in your kitchen. You're not better than the rest of us, okay? Gosh. But yeah, I would also look at checking belt tension. I would look at checking the motor pulley as well. Make sure that that's not loose. Hold the actual pulley and then command the motor to move, I don't know, five millimeters in each direction. If the motor moves at all before it starts to skip, your pulley is actually loose. And that's where the grub screw tightening it up can fix that problem. You can also check your Bowden tube. Bowden tubes can get damaged over time. They are a wear item. And those of you that own bamboo lab printers, when was the last time you checked the Bowden tubes in your AMS? You might want to do that. They wear out quicker than you think. And they're a relatively cheap thing to deal with, but it's a relatively pain in the ass thing to deal with when you actually need it to work. I do want to put together a preventative maintenance video all on the bamboo. Do you guys want to see that? Because it's something that like, Mine's coming up for a pretty serious PM, so, like, why not make a video about it? Let me know. Let me know if you want to see a PM video for bamboos or any printers, honestly. I think preventative maintenance videos are pretty important, and we did one for V-Wheels a while back. We'll card to that. But I want to look at doing them more for specific printers, right? The big printers on the market right now, like the Prusa Mark IVs, which are going to be the same for the Mark Threes, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, and... It's going to be relatively similar for the P1P and the P1S. I think it's an important thing for us to do to PM our printers. We certainly don't do them as often as we all probably should, but I understand why a lot of people don't. Your time is more valuable than the printer itself. That's just statistics. But yeah, check to make sure everything is tight. Grub screws, pulleys, belts. If all of that is tight, I'd look at your Bowden tube, and I'd look at your extruder. Make sure your extruder gears are clean as well. And if all that isn't the issue... Check those wires. I bet those wires might be getting in the way too. Do you have a CR6 SE? And if so, have you experienced this issue? Am I on the right path with the cables? Or do you think it's going to be something mechanical? I'd love to know your thoughts. And if you are having issues with your printers and you do want to get more one-on-one -on -one assistance, you can join the names right next to me listed at the $5 tier and higher. And at the $10 tier, you get to come hang out in our private Discord server where you... Get to see all about the shirts that are coming out. These are all the final samples of different brands of the shirts so that we know exactly what shirts we're going to be selling in the upcoming merch drop that is happening for 3D Musketeers. So if you do want to get yourself a Long Cat shirt, which you guys have been telling me you want Long Cat shirts, get subscribed, stay tuned. And if you do want to get a little extra coupon code, go ahead and support us because even at $5 tier, a coupon code can go a long way if you buy a couple of shirts. Thank you to those of you that do support the channel. And if you don't want to support financially, that's fine. A like and subscribe helps as well. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series. And right after that will be a random video that YouTube chooses for you. I think you should choose them both. And I'd love to know your thoughts on new merch down below. But that is all we have for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Hope all of you still have all your fingers. Murica. Take care.